that, I now turn it over to the Committee on Finance, Ms. Barner. Regent Barner.
But the Democrats can simply say, well, we couldn't get a vote for a revenue increase from the Republicans, so we're going to just go along with this budget and cut IRA. I think that's going to be a very important focus for all of us together. Do we have a veto on the floor? People make a circle, maybe. I just wanted to say, um, we can do the best we can in Sacramento. I think the odds of getting anything done in a major way with the city and representatives up there are not great. So I think many of us are really absolutely for what you want to do here. But we're going to have to turn this into a political campaign that goes to the ballot next November. And just as you ask us... Does anybody know? Does anybody know how to turn the speakers out? How to turn the speakers out? Fight to make and where is the fight? 
super rich. Pay for public education. Pay for public education. And essential services. And essential services. Transcends every university system. Transcends every university system. School district and community. School district and community. Therefore be it resolved. Therefore be it resolved. That this people's regents meeting. That this people's regents meeting.
Okay. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. One of the problems with the way the university is funded. One of the problems with the way the university is funded is that student fees are unrestricted. Is that student fees are unrestricted. Whereas other sources of income from the university, whereas other sources of income from the university are restricted. Are restricted. The university is currently being run as a corporation. The, the university is currently being run as a corporation. There are profitable and unprofitable sectors of it. There are profitable and unprofitable sectors of it. Udolf has said that the uh, student, the education part is one of the most unprofitable ones. Udolf yeah. has said that the education part is one of the most unprofitable ones. I would suggest that. I would suggest that. This is looking at it wrong. This, this is looking, looking at, at it wrong. Instead, we need to look at ways to convince the legislature to let us. Instead, we need to convince the legislature to let us move these restricted funds into education. Move these restricted funds into education. The non-elected board of regents. The non-elected board of regents. In addition to asking for more money. In addition to asking for more money needs to ask for ways to spend the money that they're earning for education. Needs to ask for ways to spend the money that they're earning for education. Uh, this is a general comment. This is you, am I loud enough? Do you guys need people mic it? I don't know. Can you hear you? Let's do it. This is a general comment on the focus of this General Assembly. It is my personal opinion that this needs to stay focused on the budget and the financing. Uh, of the UC system. Uh, I don't believe we should focus on the other aspects of our movement, such as police brutality and all the symptoms of the, the failings of the budget. And I think it's important that we focus at the Regents meeting, focusing on finance, that we focus on finance. Do you have a direct response? Um, direct response. I think that all oppression is connected, and if we want to look at the, the larger system that's at hand here, we need to consider um, other things that are happening on our campus because I really feel that uh, the police brutality on campus is symptomatic of larger structural issues and um, one might do well to check one's white male privilege because some of us here are in positions um, that are not are not as apt and inclined. I think. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to articulate but um, I think it's unfair to to say that not knowing the struggles and uh, I don't think it's okay for you to address him, his white male privilege. He's a student here as well, and he is facing, there. it doesn't matter if you're white, black, male, or female, you are pepper sprayed on the quad, you're forced to pay the raised student fees, we're all in this together, okay? And we're all being subjected to, as a lower position in society, since we don't make as high income, that is our class struggle together. As a body, where do we want to move from here? Do we feel like we need more people involved in this discussion? Do we want to continue? Or what do you guys want? What do, you, what do we want to do? Okay, right here, let's go with the proposal or let's go with the discussion. Alright. Right here, if you want to be on the stack, raise your hand right now. Can I direct 
the sponsor there as a response. Is that appropriate? Should I get off second? Oh, what's the? You'd be next on second, Eli. Okay. Uh, I just want to clarify what I was saying earlier. I respect your, your challenge me personally. Uh, I don't take offense to it. That's fair. Uh, I think it's important that I respect my point, position of privilege. Um, but more to the point of what we're doing here and what I think is important on what we're doing here as a General Assembly at a Regents meeting is that if our desire is to have a more democratic administration and have dialogue with the Regents, we cannot simply alienate them and remove them from the discussion. I think we should have, made, I think we should have started, I think it's too late now, I think we should have started with making demands that they engage in a direct dialogue with, points that, with, with specific points that we have made today rather than come here talk about our discontents with the system to a room that is empty of the authorities that will make this decision. I think what we're doing today is almost uh, counterproductive or we're not moving very far forward from where we were yesterday and we lost an opportunity to engage with our administrators today. And if they're here, I would like to welcome them to be back in. I don't know if they're in the next room or if they're across campus by now. So that, that is the point of, of what I was saying we should focus on today. I'll just be brief. They made the decision to leave. Um, they also made the decision to close public comment. Um, so, our, well, most of them made the decision to leave. Um, so, it's not our decision. They left. So, we aren't alienating them at all. We are making it a more open discussion. They closed themselves off. Quick direct response. I just. No, go ahead, whoever's. Did you, have, did you have a direct response earlier that I cut you off from? Um, no, that is just um, commentary on, I, I do believe the region should be here, so we should be talking to them. And um, the, well, you made actually a great point that they chose to left, and I don't think we're the ones um, alienating them. I think we have been alienated in um, certain communities um, within, like, this movement have been alienated. Regent, student regent for exemplary participating with us. And also I ask, is there any chance you'd be willing to set an example for the other regents and sign the pledge? And does anyone have a copy? Okay. Direct response? Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Um, so thank you for the question. Um, and I also appreciate the fact we've created a space for everybody. Um, I kind of want to not talk because we did have we already had the regents regents meeting. It's the people's regents meeting. Um, Alfredo and I released an open letter to our fellow regents, administrators, and students, um, making clear that we supported a more progressive tax system and taxes on the wealthy. Uh, we support Proposition 13 reform. A number of other things that are part of that pledge. We haven't signed the pledge because, frankly, we don't know a lot about it and some parts of it. Um, and I'm not comfortable. I think this is a reasonable position to sign something I'm not familiar with. But you should know that part of our job, or we see part of our job, as pushing the administration from the inside to do things like support an initiative that raises tax revenues uh, from the wealthy, supports an initiative that um, reforms Prop 13. We've been, we've been helpful with UCSA's campaign, their postcard campaign to reform uh, Prop 13 and collect postcards to send to the governor. So um, I hope that one of the things that you all consider as you sort of strategize about how best to do your advocacy <coughs> is to think about having more student regents on the board because we're, we're limited in what we can do. There's only two of us, and only one of us can vote, right? So I can push for all the things that I've described. Ultimately, our impact is on the margins. Thank you for that. Um, could you give him a couple copies of the pledge? And I guess my own feeling was that it was raised on every single campus by almost a quarter of the speakers, and so it basically puts into words what you just said. So it would be a huge step in terms of you know forcing the other regions to actually uh, decide where they stand. So please consider it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I just have a question. What would it take for you to seriously consider signing the pledge? So I mean, it's an interesting. We support like probably two thirds of the pledge. Um, the the last third of it is sort of difficult for us because we don't want to be pressured into signing something that we're not comfortable with, we're not familiar with. Um, acknowledging that we do advocacy within the system on behalf of the things on the pledge that we are comfortable with on a regular basis. Um, 
And also, I mean, there's, we're in a really tricky position, right? We're, we're the ones who have to sort of embed ourselves within the system and try to push from within. And maintaining our credibility in the eyes of students and maintaining our roles as like, advocates for students is really important to us. At the same time, we have an obligation, if we're going to do this job well, to maintain our credibility in the eyes of the other regions. And it's just something that we're always balancing. Literally every day we're thinking about how we balance this. Um, and the pledge is, you know, a, a sort of something that puts pressure on exactly that balance. So we've been thinking about it really hard and we're still thinking about it. Can I ask you what the last one sort of the pledge is that you don't agree with? Um, so I really, I would really, uh, I would really recommend that everybody check out the open letter that we published. I, I hope it was published in the Aggie. We try to get it published, and published in every single student newspaper. I know it was published in some of them or several of them. I hope, um, and it sort of states our position on all of these issues. Um, and you know, I mean, it, it's it's. I want to emphasize this. So Alfredo and I work within a set of constraints that make it difficult for us to do our job, but we really do everything we can from within the system. Can I ask you what your personal opposition to the last third is? Because I could read that no, a little I, later. It's not, like, I'm not going to sort of have like a policy conversation. Like, okay. I'm, I'm very strongly supportive of increasing taxes on the wealthy. I'm very strongly supportive of an increasingly progressive tax system. I'm incredibly strong and supportive of both parts of Prop 13. And I've been pushing those messages like within UCOP and within the Board of Regents for uh, as long as I've been on the board. Thank you. Okay, just process. We have two people on the stack. Um, oh. Just to verify, you need to sign this So. I mean, you pretty much everything you said before is what we're saying. I mean, tax and the wealthy, increasing tax in California as well as. So let me push back on you for just one second. Um, I am, and Alfredo is. Uh, the strongest supporters for the policy ideas and the principles of the pledge within, sorry. So, we are on the Board of Regents um, the strongest supporters of the principles that underlie that pledge and have constantly tried to get the administration and the Regents to be more aggressive. One of the things that was on my agenda when I sought this position was to make the Regents and the University more aggressive and and I don't, I don't think it's terribly useful, but I don't, I don't mean to second guess how you do your advocacy by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm, we're the closest thing that you have like, to advocates for exactly your position, for advocates for your principles, certainly. So to sort of take an oppositional stance with us is, 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 is hard. Like it, it, it's, it's difficult for us. Um, we're really, really committed to working with students to push these ideas in the work of regions. Uh, as for signing the pledge, I'm not refusing to sign it. I'm just sort of, you know, we're working through it. Um, and as we do so, we're actively doing advocacy for the portions of it that we know that we support now. <coughs> All I was going to say to be on stack was um, the when people were reading it at the multiple universities, the pledge, it was kind of muddled over and uh, it wasn't very well heard. And I feel like it might be beneficial to, I mean, you refuse to read the part that you don't agree with, but I feel like maybe we should read all of it. Um, uh, just really quick through, that's kind of a proposal, not really, I don't know. The discussion time is, is over. We okay. have to move on to the post. Um, uh, we have one more. There was a direct response. Oh, okay. Was there a direct response? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I, so you guys sort of covered this, but I mean, I think it's very clear if we ask you to sign this, you say, no, you're not signing it. That means, yes, by definition, you're refusing to sign it. Um, I think it would be helpful. You seem like a bright guy. I'm sure you can figure out exactly what this pledge is asking you. If we could take a few minutes for you to read it over and explain to us why you refuse to sign it, I think that would be very helpful. And it would be a good show uh, that you do, in fact, want to work with us and that you have good intentions uh, behind your actions. Yeah, so, sorry. Yeah. Um, I get all of that. I mean, I get it. Um, I'm sort of, I don't know if, if it's pride ultimately, but I'm not going to um, sign it in a, sort of in a circumstance where I feel forced. Um, I, I uh, when we wrote that open letter, um, it was our attempt to sort of explain exactly how we feel about these issues to everybody. And we sent it throughout the 
administration, sense of other regions, etc. Um, and am I am I open to like continue to consider the pledge? Yes. Am I going to sign it here today after a conversation here or not? Um, there's two folks on the stack. Uh, there, there isn't. I, can, I, I, can we increase I, discussion process? I, I, have a, I have a question. What do we think that we're going to get out of the discussion if we're not discussing specifics of a proposal by this point? Because, like, I've worked with Jonathan the UCSA in uh, August uh, in the, the Congress in Riverside where we got the idea to reform Prop 13 uh, through, and uh, he didn't have, like, a very big role in that, but he was definitely supportive of that. I mean, like, the, the, what? It was my, it was, sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting. I'm sorry, you had a very big role in it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> like I was, I was pushing two years ago to get right. UCSA to like no. tackle Prop 13. It, it, like it's, it's, yeah. like, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I, I, mis, I misstated your stance. Yes. The, the point is, like, he's very committed to that. He's the only person right now whom we have in this room whom we are able to hold accountable for anything. So I really don't think that we should be bullying him into signing something that he hasn't read completely. And I think that there are other things that we can ask that he bring back to the regents um, that would be more effective. For instance, um, I would propose that we ask the regents commission, say something like the uh, student body presidents at every campus to be their own committee and kind of like look at ways that things can be reformed with regard to campus policy. I don't have any specifics of that. That's just something I thought of right now. All right. But the point is, we, if we bring specific proposals like that that we can discuss and we tell Jonathan to tell them to the, to the regents, perhaps they will take that a bit more seriously. But really pressuring Jonathan is just making him out to be a bad guy when he's not. Well, I, I would argue that the regions aren't taking it seriously if, if, he's, if he's already working towards these goals. And they obviously aren't taking him seriously, number one. And number two, if they're not taking him seriously, if I were you, I would resign in protest. Because that's absurd that we have a student regent that's not willing to either stand up for the student's actual goals and aims in this movement, or number two, is willing to be kicked around by the regents and just not listen to. So either, either you should stand up for the principles that you say Without signing the the uh, refund pledge, the principles that you say you you support, um, either you stand up for those and resign in, in, in protest, or you should resign because you simply don't represent the student body. And I think I think that stands for all the student regions. You and um, there, there's him and Alfredo. Yeah, you and Alfredo. Yeah. Just a quick note: um, a couple of hand signals that can help us with this general assembly is this one, which means direct response. If you really have something that you need to say right after a comment that's made, um, make that hand signal, and I will be able to see it as well as my co-facilitator and the sack keeper. Um, we will make note of it. Also, this one: this is point of process. If something, if people are speaking out of turn, or if we're not saying what the process should be, make this signal, and then we'll understand that, that we need to continue with the point of process. That so facilitation goes smoothly so we can actually get stuff done. So feel free to point it out on us or anyone here so we can keep things moving. Right. So we just had a comment where someone was suggesting something interesting, so let's get a response. Um, so uh, first of all, I appreciate that this is a sort of non-threatening environment where I feel I can engage in a respectful way with your comments. Um, uh, so I appreciate it. Um, and I respect your opinion. Uh, I disagree with it. Um, the student region has always made a difference in sort of small but important ways. So as an example, um, the administration, this is, this is a bit of a tangent, but it sort of illustrates what the student region is capable of doing and work that I think is important. Um, the administration, uh, sorry, student fees, one third of student fees, currently go to financial aid, 33%. That's, that's policy. Um, and UCOP, UCOP is interested in dropping that down to like 27% and then fundraising to fill the difference. And their thinking is, well, if we get all of our financial aid money through student fees, we have to fundraise from private donors around things like paying our IT bills and stuff, and we can't do that. And my response was, well, if you eliminate the one-third, you eliminate the guarantee that as funds continue, fees continue to go up, we're always going to have at least a somewhat sufficient amount of money for financial aid. So by 
being in the meetings where those conversations were happening and being a pain in the ass over and over and over, we got the administration to say that if they do go forward with that plan, they won't drop the percentage from 33% until they've already confirmed that they can raise enough money every year to fill the difference. So you may not feel like that's important. I don't know. Um, I think it is. And I think that having someone who can do that sort of work from within the system is a really important complement to the other forms of student advocacy that are obviously going on across the system. And I don't think that a really effective student movement can exist with students doing sort of a limited number of things. We have to do everything that we can in every way. And I think that includes having a student region who does the sort of work that I've just described as sort of incremental as it may be. Okay, uh, this is a good discussion. This is I'm, I'm really um, happy that, that people are here and we're able to hear from our student regents right now. Uh, this is a really important conversation. Um, I'd like to make a comment about the, the Board of Regents and your role in it and everything. Um, I think we were mentioning earlier possibly having more student representation on more folks like you to, to, to make those you know incremental changes from the inside. How can we make that happen? What work can we do to for that for the student voice to be stronger on the Board of Regents? Um, so, currently, um, UCSA, um, is everyone familiar with UCSA? The statewide student government, um, which includes most student governments, but unfortunately doesn't include Davis because of sort of a weird and tangled history. Um, one of their campaigns for the year is increasing student regents, the number of student regents. And right now they're trying to figure out if we have to do it through a constitutional amendment, which would require a full budget campaign, would require fundraising millions of dollars, um, or if it can be done through a change to regental policy, which means it can be pushed through the Board of Regents itself. Um, and we're working on it. And if you're interested in helping work on it, UCSA has full-time staff working on these issues, and they have students who are sort of leading that campaign across the state. And I would guess that because there is this disconnect between UCSA and, and Davis, unfortunately, that there's probably no one at Davis working on it actively right now. Um, and I'm, I'm, I think it would be great if there was, and I think UCSA would love to have as much help as it can get. Uh, UCSA is UCSA is part of uh, the Refund California, uh, and uh, people here also have been working. Um, on, on those uh, on those issues that Reef in California tackled, and um, it, which kind of brings me back to the to the whole you know, uh, pledge thing. You know, if uh, if indeed we are working together for the same uh, objectives, um, then what's what what's the big deal? We, we are all together in in the same uh, in the same project. UCSA unions. Um, Nonprofits um, and uh, a host of other organizations that have, have signed on to to the Refund California initiative. Um, so I'm just I'm just you know, if, if indeed you consider yourself to be as part of that project, then you know it, it just kind of. Uh, so um, I do agree that it's one student movement, and and like I said, I think that a student movement that works effectively has to have people who. Protest at Regents meeting, protest on campus, protest in Sacramento, lobby the Regents, lobby their chancellors, lobby in Sacramento, write postcards, write letters, lobby their parents, whatever. Everybody sort of working in all their different ways. Um, but to enforce sort of a requirement that everyone who takes part in that agree to the same set of principles and policy positions strikes me as limiting your ability to do coalition building effect. That's my response. I just want to say, I feel like we're all avoiding a very basic fact, and that's that the majority of the people on the Board of Regents have class interests that are very different from ours as students and workers. These are people like Dick Blum, Monica Lozano. If you guys don't know, Dick Blum is a billionaire. His wife is a senator. He owns his own hedge fund. He has an owning share in the second biggest private education firm in the country. Uh, he also has 
millions of dollars tied up in construction firms is construction firms are making buckets of fucking money when the university is building new buildings that we don't need at a time when students are dropping out because they can't afford their education. His private education firm makes money as students are pushed out of the UC, pushed out of the CSU, pushed out of the community colleges into diploma mills that have the highest rate for students uh, uh, defaulting on their student loan debt. He is making tons of money off of privatizing our university and pretending that this is someone we can work with, like we're all in the same boat here, is complete bullshit. And I think we need to address this if we're going to have a meaningful conversation and not just have some Q&A session back and forth about like playing footsie with these people. <laughs> There's direct response, and then do you want to get on the stack, or is that a direct response? It's kind of direct response. Yeah. Kind of? So they connect, thank you. Okay, right here, and then it's you. Um, just to piggyback off uh, Andrew, the idea is to use this pledge to call them for their bullshit. And by helping us, in, by signing this, you will help us call that, call them out for their, uh, for the, uh, bullshit that they've been feeding us, the regents, Yudoff, who's, who's, by the way, Blum's guy, um, and was put there by, by Blum to get, uh, you know, the highest salary a uh, uh, president ever has ever taken. Um, and so, I, I, I mean, it's just a way for us to, to call them out and, and buy people within the regions, like, uh, such as you, having us um, having you pledge that helps us call the bullshit out when you know when we know it's just bullshit. Um, I'm gonna piggyback off of both of you now, and I want to like give a specific example of what Andrew's talking about, like the difference between what we're trying to do here and like how you see what you're doing. You gave the example of getting the regents not to reduce that. Um, portion of tuition that goes to, to funding or to uh, financial assistance, right? Unless, say, secure private funding beforehand. But that also, even if you do that, you're, it's still uh, accelerating the privatization of the UC. Do you see it's not really solving the problem, it's just saying, well, we'll continue to privatize as long as we can have these sort of, like, uh, not very important uh, concessions that, and the UC just continues to privatize along these incremental lines that you say, you know, that might seem incremental to you, and yeah, it does. And I think because of what, you know, Andrew's pointing out, that there's class interest at the bottom of this, and it's very difficult for you or any, anybody else within the system to just kind of chip away at that, and that's why we end up with something like this. You know, you said you've been working two years, push against Prop 13, hasn't worked out so well. Why do you think, you know? Um, I, I think this is becoming a Q&A. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, learn about this education system, like the more disenfranchised I feel and the more I think about my parents like who worked so hard to, to get me here and it's been a struggle, like I realized those, um, sorry for the question, but I just realized that, um, yeah, those, <coughs> the more that I've learned, um, the less um, I feel like I can work with that system. I, it's just, it's just broken, and there are so many like really, really um, like incredible powers that are up there, and it affects um, me and my family in a really deep way. And so I feel like I've been really motivated by um, other spaces um, that I've been a part of, that, and I feel like I've found my own political consciousness. And I feel like students are able to get things done, you know, when they're talking to each other and making decisions. And it's a different way of organizing the and I feel like that's <coughs> Okay, just a quick note, make sure you're speaking up so everybody can hear you. Uh, uh, do you want me to 
be on the stacks? On the stack. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And you are on the stack? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, uh, I do feel like I'm talking too much. Um, but I respect the way that, I, I respect your views on this, and I respect the way that you want to do your organizing and your advocacy. And I hope that people here can sort of respect the way that I do my organizing and I do my advocacy. Um, I understand the view that the system is broken and just fundamentally doesn't serve students. Uh, there's two students every year whose job it is to try to work in a minute. Um, I wish there was like six or eight, but uh, there's just a couple of us who sort of believe in the system enough to think that it can be changed in smaller and more ways from the inside. And I stand by, talking about what I discussed with financial aid, I stand by the importance of that. I understand that it continues to privatize the university. I get it. I mean, I understand all of these views. I, I share your principles and your values and all of this. And I'm just saying, like, I see my role as trying to sort of put up one tiny roadblock as things move in the wrong direction. And that's, that's how I've chosen to mean it. You know, it's clearly important to me because it's a million hours a week and I'm trying not to fail out of school. But it's just how I do my organizing and my apps. If I can give an update on what the campus is, the police have begun lining up outside of UCLA to break up the people. Are your regions at work? Can we get a repeat on that? I couldn't hear. Uh, the police have begun lining up outside of the people's regions meeting in UCLA. Okay. So there are similar um, people's regions meeting, like the one we're having right now, happening on other campuses. This is, we're not just alone, because this is a system-wide problem that we're talking about right now. Um, so let's continue with RGA right now. There's someone on the stack. Yeah. Um, my name's Mark. I've lived in Davis for many years. I'm not a student, but I something I wanted to add. The chairman of the regions, chairwoman, and I don't know her name, but if you recall, dur during the meeting, she invited the students to go in January to the Capitol with the regents, or at least with her or some of them, to talk to the legislators about, you know, stop the funding cuts for education. Now here, I'll tell you what I think is good and bad about that. The, the good part is, it's an invitation from the chair, chairwoman of the regents of the University of California to work with the students, which I think you should capitalize on. We should capitalize on. I'm not a student. Um, with all due respect, I don't think the state is going to be able to produce more money for education. And there are a lot of reasons. The two-thirds rule for, require, for more income taxes, the fact that the Republicans have more than one-third of the legislature, and we saw what happened with the governor's budget. It had to be passed by Democrats alone. All the Republicans voted against it. So what I believe is that even if the students and the regents all go to raise all the fuss that is possible at the legislature, to stop the funding cuts for education, it's kind of like there isn't more money there. There could be changes to the tax code to tax the rich, and I totally agree with making the banks pay. So I agree with both of those things. I agree with no tuition hikes. But here's where the pot of money is available. It's in Washington. It's in the Pentagon. It's in the Department of Defense. A few statistics. The weapons budget of the Department of Defense is over $200 billion per year. $200 billion. And I believe it's an all-time high. If that were cut, I don't know, 10%, something like that, it could fund public education in, in many states. And so here's what I'm suggesting. Take the regents up on their offer, the chairwoman of the board of the regents, take her up on the offer, but let's say, when we go to Sacramento, let's ask for everything that you were talking about asking for, you know, ask the state to stop funding cuts for education, and let's ask for one more thing. Let's ask for a resolution from the legislature. Speaker Perez was here today. But the, the whole legislature, a resolution that is addressed to the Congress that says, we want you to reduce the weapons budget and send the money that is saved back to the states for education. Now, this would be a non-binding thing, but it would have the impact of publicity and, and public relations. It's something that you could work with, and I really believe it's an opportunity to capitalize. <laughs> I, I think that's uh, an interesting idea, but, but the whole point is that uh, um, we need to take care of, of the, the problem that's on our doorstep, which is the regions to continue to destroy the university. And so 
um, as long as they're sitting there privatizing the bejesus out of everything that we've worked so hard to build and, and generations in the past have worked so hard to be a part of, you know, a lot of us here have a lot more invested in the UC than money, and all the regions have invested in this system is money. Okay, so what we what we need to do is replace the governing system that's in place for the UC. It's not about going to Washington right now. We need to have advocates. I don't care if the chairwoman says she wants to walk in Sacramento with us. She's not our advocate. She's a rich lady who wants to dictate the way that all of our lives go in higher education. She's not our advocate. I will not walk with that woman because we need to replace those people first and foremost. We need to have advocates, true advocates, academics, people who know how these systems work and who know how to make them work for the students, not for their own pocketbooks. That's what we need to do first and foremost. And then we can talk about Washington at a later date. But first and foremost, we need to do that. And second of all, as far as the student regents are concerned, we don't need a student regent who's going to be a roadblock. Who's going to, we need a student regent who's going to lay his body on the machinery of the regents and say, look, I will sacrifice myself as a student regent in protest to what you are doing to the university and to the students that attend this university. You know, I know it's a, it's a wonderful year for you guys to be involved in, in the system and be trying to work within the system. But we're, I think we're way beyond that point. When you're talking about decreasing private funding from 33% to 27%, this is peanuts. We need to move past that, and we need to, dis we need to destroy the system that the regents have built, the privatization of the... I mean, I've got, a, I've got U.S. banks stamped on the back of my ID card. That's absurd. And the fact that, the, that, that there are even students who are willing to sit there and try and work within this system that's so corrupt and so decayed is, is, is beyond me. It's, we're past that point. We're way past that point. If you do direct response all the time, it just winds up being only a couple of people speaking, and they're not really learning how to wait their turn. Um, so what I would like to say is that um, well, one thing I would like to see in my lifetime is more student governance of the University of California. And I think that there are a lot of people here who might agree with that. Um, and the thing is, like something like that might be, have to be taken to the people of the state of California um, through an initiative process, or it might just be as simple as convincing one governor or convincing just enough legislators for, for those types of reforms to happen. But they're not going to happen if they don't trust that students are able to be in leadership positions. So right now they have kind of these, you know, two student positions, only one is even voting on the Board of Regents. It's not, it's not very powerful, but we should be asking them to give more power to students and then eventually those students will have a better argument of why you don't even need the regents. I mean, right now, I think that any anyone in this room could probably do a better job as regent than Blum. But, um, you know, he doesn't think that. The state doesn't think that. You try to take that to the voters, they think, well, they're just a bunch of students who are complaining about, you know, a couple little fees. Also, they see students as only rich people for the most part. They don't realize the reality that a lot of us are not from very, from very rich families. Um, so I think that we could, we could ad adopt some, some simple practices that we would then demand our student regents to put on the agenda and to not like, attend a meeting that does not have it on the agenda. You know, that's something that they can do. They can say, we want to put something on the agenda. If you don't allow this to be on the agenda, we're not going to attend the meeting. Um, so it, it, there, uh, one reform could be you could have all of the current regents be required to have kind of like office hours on each of the UC campuses at some point over the semester so that students have a chance to actually meet the regents and talk with them because I believe that they're human beings and when you talk with them you might be able to convince them of things like they're not quite as bad as we're making them out to be although you know not necessarily that great either but um, I believe that communication is a great thing for us this is what we're doing right here communicating um, and the fact that we only have like these are two student representatives with us here today we should capitalize on. We can adopt something. We can then ask all the other campuses to adopt it as well. That would be, that would be one simple thing that we could do. Require that the regions hold certain, uh, certain office hours or things on, on each of the campuses. We can also require that, um, for instance, the student body president or the external affairs vice president at each um, campus also be a direct liaison with the regents, or even with one 
particular region, so that that region would even be have more presence on campus. That region would not always be having office hours, sometimes just be meeting with student government, and uh, that way the people whom we elect to be our, our representatives uh, to the general public, like the external affairs vice president, would then be able to talk with the region, come back to us, and tell us what the problems are. Now, a lot of this process that we're doing right here is part of the Occupy movement, which has been very like anti-representative in itself like not wanting to elect representatives. So if we do this, we don't have to elect any representative here as a general assembly. We don't have to be, we're not speaking for the Occupy movement. We're asking for people who are already going to be elected through student government processes, because these are what we do in this country, to have more important roles. Every single student government on all of the UC campuses have been devalued each summer. Every summer, they just reduce the amount of power that the student government has. This past summer at Berkeley, they, they reduced it down to essentially the ASUC is just a sub-department of another department. So I'm making an actual proposal now. I'd like us to, you can split into small discussion groups or we can do this right here. My, dis, my, my, my proposal is that we, that we uh, require the regents to hold uh, office hours, each of them to hold like an office hours type thing on each campus. Uh, once every two months. That's proposal one. And then the second proposal to be voted on separately would be that the, uh, the uh, student body president and the external affairs vice president are the official liaisons with the, the regions and are required to report back to the student body. So that's two proposals. Okay. Like. So thank you for your proposals. We were um, still in discussion and then we were going to go into proposals and we already went there. Does that happen? That's okay. But we do have two people on the stack. Um, so uh, I'd, I'd like to get their um, concern, or I'd like to get their comments. Um, and I just want to point out that we have been talking for over over 10 minutes um, about you know everything. Um, to just point that out. So let's get two more comments, and then we can move forward with possibly going back to the proposal. Can I just give an update real quick on the Regents meeting? They, um, they're, they're meeting behind closed doors right now without any student uh, students allowed. There's a wall of uh, riot police uh, protecting the building at UCLA, and they're they're convening via phone to make uh, to make votes right now. That's the uh, that's the update from. Yeah, they, they reconvened, yeah, they, they reconvened without any student participation, so, in, including you two That's fellows. Hard. We just got work. Uh, if I may speak, I don't want to yeah, of course. Uh, so. I don't know if you guys got a chance to look at the Regents agenda item, but the issue that we were discussing um, this, with the meeting was, uh, when the People's Regents meeting started, um, was uh, the most pressing piece of business, I think, for the students. Um, there's some actuarial reports about uh, retirement and health care benefits that uh, I don't know if necessarily we, in my case, have uh, my input on. But, uh, I would rather be at this meeting than there. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, briefly. Yeah, briefly. I, I agree with everything that was said about Richard. Um, um, I did a little bit of research on, on uh, salaries in K through 12 education. I don't know what a professor makes at UC Davis or the other UC. The average starting teacher salary in California is about forty-two thousand dollars a year. And then what's going on in Washington? For a single bond, the Pentagon pays a million dollars. The closest, closest, closest example is a Tom Hawk Hughes missile, which is a million and a half dollars. If you run it down to a million, that means that one bomb is costing the equivalent of 25 starting teacher salaries in K-12 education, assuming a professor makes it like that or something like that. It's just an enormous waste of money. Now, um, if, you, if you have a way to replace the regents, go for it. And, and our student region could, could, could inform us as to what's the way to do that. In my opinion, it's not going to happen anytime soon. you got to wonder, if you replace this region, is the person that comes in to replace him or her going to be any better? I don't know. But when the chairwoman of the board says, I will work with you on something that's consistent with what we want, absolutely, I would say, take, take her up on that offer because it's a golden offer. And, and she might not say that. I mean, I don't know if... I just see that as a really substantial offer, a substantial gift. Because she might have said, well, fine, listen, you guys do what you want. But she didn't. She said, I'll work with you. So all I'm saying is propose to her to work with her on that and something similar, which is to reduce the weapons of that. I'm done. Thanks. Um, I think we 
should push for an initiative to make the UC Regents democratically accountable to students and faculty. I, I think that I'm, I'm a poli sci major and I understand what goes into that and how crazy the amount of work is that takes. But I think that that is our best option to make anything happen. And I think if we work in tandem with the other UCs and maybe other Occupy movements and tell them of our plight and our cause, I think we could get an initiative passed to make the UC Regents democratically accountable to students and faculty. That does sound like a proposal. Um, I guess I just want to like quickly just check in right now because basically there was a meeting planned for today. Everyone whose name tags were here were all all here before, and they were planning on continuing with the agenda that they that they had. And I just want to say like the the student regents are standing with us right now, uh, and 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 listening to to our ideas. We have a lot of pretty great ideas. Also a point of process, we should have gotten a note taker at the beginning of this meeting. So let's start taking notes on everything. Another point of process. Is that a water bomb nearby? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, yeah, that sounds like a proposal to democratize the UC system <laughs> in the way that people are chosen and elected. Um, I just heard, um, so similar um, people's regents meetings are now happening in UCLA and in UCSF. And UCSF, Gavin Newsom has joined them. He's participating in the regents meeting. Um, and in UCLA, they've, they've also done it. Um, uh, here on campus, um, students have just occupied that hall. It's currently all about. So, just to be Point of, or maybe it's a question, a clarifying question, it might be a point of information. Um, last week at a GA, uh, we called for the beginning of the democratization of the Chancellor position here at UC Davis. Um, is this an extension of that? I guess is a question. For the, I forgot who's proposing. Is this an extension? Is this an extension of that? Oh, I'm sorry. So last week at a General Assembly, uh, we voted to pass um, the. Specifically to, to work to instate a recall function of the UC Davis Chancellor as a as a first step in democratizing the UC administration. Um, so I was wondering, first, if you're aware of that, and second, if this is just a greater extension of that, like the next step in democratizing the process, and what you seek to entail in that, such as do we want to get um, student regent support in, in this direct proposal and write that in? Um, no, I wasn't aware of that, and I don't believe you'll have the super recall if we're able to democratically elect our regents. So, I think that we should de democratically elect our regents. I'm not asking for recall, I'm asking for election. So. Okay, I have a response to that. I mean, in terms of like improving the way that our democracy functions, we do have our ACCD president here. Um, I, I am personally interested to, to hear his or the VP's um, perspective on, on what we're talking about right now and like what, what are our actual options as students to go forward with, with democratizing um, having more of a full representation for, um, for all positions, including ACCD, the Chancellor, and the Regent. What, 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 uh, yeah, what response do you have? Sure. The ACC President, of course, is already elected by the students, um, so is Senate. Um, and one of the most frustrating parts about the position that Bree and I have, Bree's Vice President, is that, you know, we've been literally working, we've both been Senators, so we've been in ACC for a long time. Uh, I'm on the last quarter, I'm a fifth year, graduating in December. I've been in ACC since my freshman year. And so I've seen, basically from my sophomore year to now, how this movement has progressed. And I would never expect that Davis would be um, this active and this educated and um, that's major props to everyone that's involved. I know it's not limited to this group, but never would I have guessed we'd be at this point today. Um, and you know, it gives, it, it helps, you know, I think what Jonathan's trying to allude to, and I'll get to your, I'm sorry, I'll leave it for big context, but I think what Jonathan alludes to is, you know, we need people to occupy because when people occupy, 
that gives Alfredo, myself, and Jonathan Bree more power when we go talk to people. And I can't tell you how much more candid our conversations are, how much more willing people are willing to work with us. And at the same respect, I mean, if we're going to be completely honest, and we want a really coalition bill, there are not as many students as I thought there would be here. We opened up the pavilion today because we thought there would be overflow. And I want to get to a point where we, you know, all 24,000 undergrads care enough to at least come to one of these, goes to Sacramento once, goes to one rigid meeting, makes one phone call. It doesn't, you know, Jonathan says to me all the time, it doesn't matter what your ideology or strength is, but as long as you do what you're good at. And I think for different people that's different things and we have to accept that. We, have, we can't necessarily criticize each other and say, you're not doing enough, you're not doing enough. Instead, saying, what can we all do and agree on? Let's do that. We'll hash out what we can agree on later. What we can do now is, I think there's a serious push for us. I mean, it's a more moderate approach. Uh, Yara, one of our centers, actually get, brought a great proposal, I think, that we should research on. These two would know the best. But every UC should have a student region. That only makes sense. Every campus should have a rep. I mean, you know, the, the chair, I'm, I'm chair of the city, city student liaison commission for the city of Davis. That is a student majority committee. Um, and so I think it's funny that our UC regents, the governing body that is governing us, is by far not even close to a plurality student um, run. And so that's an option. But I think something more moderate and something that a lot of people can sign on to and support. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's tough, but it's baby steps, you know? Is having a professional student, a grad student, and an undergrad. That way, each, um, each uh, student in our UC system is, uh, to the very least, has voting rights, has representation, and has a voice that they can go to. And one last thing. Um, I, one thing I'm really big on, and you guys can morally disagree with me, but you know, I believe that the state of California has an enormous obligation to um, help us. If you look at it, if you look at funding and the way the trajectory is going, it's one direction. And when the state cuts us, two things happen. And I know the regions are at, at fault also, but two things the students, the regions have to do. It's either they cut us or tuition hikes. Obviously those are very bad options, but those are the, those are the options. And so, in my thinking, and this is my, just my opinion, is you have to go after the source. And if the universe, if California's going to call it the University of California, they need to own up to it. And so if my parents are going to be like, Adam is my son, I'm paying for his tuition, I'm like, Mom and Dad, you got to do better than 8%. Why are you going to make me pay for the other 92? You know? And so it's by that same degree, the state of California has to do better, the regions have to do together, but no one should be left off the hook. I think my parents should be more vocal. I'm not sure why they're not here with me today. I know they have work, but you know, I'm not sure why my neighbors aren't more pissed off because you know they're going to need future healthcare. They're going to need future scientists. They're going to need future you know innovators, people that help with their tech, everything like that. Um, so it's not just state of California. It's not just regions. It's our neighbors because if we're going to be serious about a proposition ballot, it's going to have to pass. And right now, when we, when, when we looked at polling. It doesn't even have a majority, and that's what we need to do better. We need to tell the story of the student better. And there's no one better to tell that than you in Sacramento at the Regents. And I'll give it to you. This system sucks. Speaking for one minute, I can't tell you how pissed I was trying to get over the fact that I can only articulate one thing in one minute. I can't even get a minute out ordering like my meal at a fast food chain, <laughs> let alone telling the Regents what is wrong with the UC system. And so, you know, I am not completely lockstep with every opinion that's out there, but I do have my own opinion, and I've told you on, I've told everyone else here now, I am more than willing to work on anything, including finding a way to make you students more accountable. And I think that is very unique because, you know, let's be honest, a lot of our students don't even know who our regents are. And until we don't even know what they are and what they do and what the role of Jonathan and Alfredo are, how are we supposed to advocate honestly and openly about changing the system that we're in. And so education is a huge part, and advocacy is a huge part. And one unique thing about this whole movement since last Friday and beyond that is the pressure has finally came in. People are finally feeling that squeeze and they're like, shit, I cannot hide anymore. I can't go to another room. 
because they're going to find me at the next meeting. Because they're not going to, they're going to find out where I live. They're going to find out what my record is. They're going to find out who I voted for. You know, and so those are the things that I'm sorry. That means go faster, huh? I'm done. It means. I'm sorry. I ramble. I'm a rambler. He's a politician. I'm a rambler. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sociology and Economics at 6 p.m. Herring. It's going to be a really good lineup with a lot of great professors. One final comment. Sorry, I apologize. Um, one thing we're doing in Berkeley, and I'm actually <coughs> meeting with Berkeley student leaders um, later this afternoon to do this, is we're writing a letter that is going to be signed by the students and by the student leadership and by the faculty leadership, the Academic Senate, and send it to every alumni at UC Berkeley. Our feeling is that UC Berkeley alumni probably have never had a moment where they're more interested in hearing from students about what's going on on their campus. I suspect Davis alumni have never wanted to know more what's going on at Davis directly from students. So I would urge you to think about something similar. I'm trying to I'm trying to set it up other campuses as well so that we can send it to every alumni. <coughs> Thank you. 